If you're looking to start a video podcast this year, or maybe you want to upgrade some of the gear you're currently using on your video podcast, I'm excited to be breaking down what we use here at the Think Media Podcast from the cameras, the lightings, the audio, and even software so that you can conduct online interviews for your interview show. So with that being said, I don't know what you're waiting for. Let's get into it right now. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Tsukori with Think Media, and this channel is all about helping you build your influence with online video. And we do videos like this where we break down gear setups, YouTube studio setups, and things like that. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe. Also, shout out to Riverside for sponsoring this video, one of the leading podcasts and recording platforms. But more on them later. I do want to preface before we get into the gear that we invest in high quality equipment specifically for this podcast. You know, some of the gear we're actually using, we've been using for almost two years, which is uh, something to note that when you're investing into gear, if you buy the right thing, you won't have to buy it again. And the real reason is because of how influential a podcast could be. All the way from dropping those videos on YouTube to all the platforms that you can consume a podcast audibly, but also on Instagram and TikTok uh, when we post micro clips from the podcast. We wanna make sure we're able to retain the quality of the podcast no matter what we do with it. And so with that being said, let's jump into the audio setup of this thing, which is the Shure SM7B. Hands down, this is the industry standard podcast mic, you know, that's been around for almost 20 years. Uh, but the difference is how it sounds. Right now you're listening to the lavalier mic that I have on my jacket, but let's switch to the SM7B right now. So as you can hear, it sounds like your legit podcast radio show voice. And this is because it's a dynamic microphone, uh, but this mic isn't cheap. It's about a $400 mic, but it, you can't just use it all by itself. Obviously you see the stand, you can get a boom arm, which is cool, but we like to use a stand. Uh, and then we actually are running one XLR cable because we are using what is called a FET head preamp, which plugs right into our XLR input, which is actually really nice and clean and minimal. We used to use the cloud lifter, which required two XLRs, and it got a little bit much, and we just wanna keep things simple, clean, and only have what we need, right? So this is the SM7B. I'm super proud uh, to say that we've customized the back plate to this, uh, got used a Cricut machine, uh, spray painted the back plate that came with this, and then added our Think logo. Maybe I'll make like a, a video tutorial or a YouTube short on how you can do that. Uh, but this is definitely the mic for podcasting. There's obviously tons you can go with, and we've done reviews on tons of mics like this, uh, but we wanted the best of the best, so the short SM7B is how we capture the audio. Now, when it comes to audio, the mics you use are a part of it, but the sound treatment is a whole nother flow. Now, we have this upstairs lobby outfitted with the sound panels that you can buy off of a website that will be linked down in the description below. And you can get different colors and things like that. But this loft that we use to create our content with is literally a box with hardwood floors. And so it gets really echoey, but we wanted to make sure we invested into the sound treatment of this room as much as possible. And so uh, you can see in the footage that we've outfitted this whole loft into, to include the stairwell because there's some bouncing of audio. Kyle Anderson on the team just knew what to do, and so we just went with the flow. Uh, another thing that you can add to your setup is carpet. Carp anything that can absorb the audio bouncing will help with your audio, but keep in mind, it's not just the mics, it's also the room treatment. And so a carpeted room or a sound treated room is something you wanna take into consideration when conducting a legit video podcast. All right, so when it comes to the camera, we always encourage people, if you're doing a podcast, turn a camera on, whether it be your smartphone or an actual camera like this. And the camera we use is a Sony FX3. This is about a 36 or so hundred dollar camera. And it's like an entry level cinema camera, meaning it doesn't really have any you know, record limits. Uh, it shoots great 4K video and it won't overheat or anything like that. So it's very reliable in that sense. Another reason why we love this camera is it literally comes with XLR inputs, you know? Uh, we used to use a zoom recorder, but what we love about this is it bakes in a very high quality audio file into the video itself. And what does that mean? It just simply means that the video file has the audio file from the Shure SM7Bs. And then you can also monitor and tweak this, you know, with the analog dials, which is super nice. As far as the lens we use, we use the Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter lens. This is a super versatile zoom lens uh, for any camera. And whether we have one person on or two people on, just allows you to get the shot without having to do too much movement. So when, we're, when we just need one camera, this is the camera we're using. When we need a secondary angle, we use a Sony a7S III. And we're looking to get a third body uh, to add in for three angles. 
Um, however, as of late, we've been shooting a very solo driven podcast. So two angles is, is plenty, but those are the cameras we use. We love them. They're great with autofocus. They're great with reliability and they look super crispy. Now maybe you're watching this and now your wheels are spinning because you're like, I mean, I can kind of do that, Omar, but what if I wanted to like interview somebody online? That's why I wanna talk about Riverside FM. Riverside is an incredible software because you can kind of take a setup like this or even a setup you have at your desk with a camera and a microphone, hook it up to your computer or laptop and conduct online interviews. You know, conducting online interviews is not only convenient, but it's also the future. You know, you're seeing a lot of podcasts nowadays being in interview format, but with the people not in the same room, especially where, where we are as a world and things like that. And so what's cool about Riverside, if you choose to do it this way, is that they record high quality interviews. You'll be able to record audio and video separate tracks for all participants in your interview. And I think it's cool because of the ease of use. Simply send your link to your interviewee and then conduct your interview and you got yourself a show. If you're new to editing video, they have this feature called Clips by Riverside and you actually take those files and you actually cut out a segment from your interview and then format it the way you'd like to export it and then upload it to your social media platforms or on YouTube to actually get your podcast more out there, which is super sweet. If your video podcast might be an interview type of show, I want to encourage you to check out Riverside by checking out the link down in the description below. Now, as far as lighting goes, we really want to make sure that we have a dynamic looking podcast setup. but uh, let's start with the key lights. The first light uh, that we use is the GVM 300D. This is the main light that is used to light the faces of Sean and Heather. And uh, what's cool about this light is it is super powerful, but what's also cool is it has a Bowens mount, which is a universal light mount that allows you to put something like this on it, which is our lantern soft box. And so it's not as directional, it's actually more wide of a light and it creates a nice soft light and it fills up for two people, which is super cool. And then we actually fill in some of those shadows on their faces by bouncing another light onto the ceiling. And it just fills those shadows because we don't want such a dramatic look, an intense look, you know? This is a very lighthearted podcast. We're trying to teach you YouTube tips. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the Think Media Podcast, why don't you go do so right now? We'll post links down in the description below. But those are the key lights. That's what we are using to light their faces. And then in the back, you'll see a lot of accent lighting like you could see behind me even right now. Uh, we use a warm lighting in the back just to create a more inviting and welcoming uh, vibe. And uh, one new addition that I'm super excited about is the fake window that you see right here. Uh, this is actually a effect that can be achieved with a cob light and a snoot. Uh, the combination of the two allows you to create a cool effect. And if you want a fake window or if you want some other shape, you can switch it out with the gobos that are included or you can actually customize some. We've actually created some custom ones that are on their way to the studio, which I'm pumped about. But all that to say, just a cool dynamic that we've added into a lot of our studio setups here at Think Media. But in regards to accent lighting, we just you know throw some lamps, kind of splash some lights here and there. And then the last type of lighting I would say is the hair light we use. Uh, we just use a panel light, put it on a warm setting like all the other accent lights, and we splash that on our talent to create a hair light which separates them from the background, creating a more dynamic look and what you would call motivated lighting, which is a technique they use in a lot of Hollywood setups. Now to briefly talk about design because this is totally a vibe, I would first start off by saying that this, behind, this wall behind me is a fake wall. We actually made a video on how we achieve this. Uh, what's behind this wall is actually a staircase and we're able to swap out any color we want uh, and we use this wall for thumbnails and things like that. But more than anything, having the contrast of the black meeting the white uh, really creates a cool dynamic. People don't actually know that we're shooting all this content in a home loft. And I just think a cool creative way that a lot of people could consider making in their studio setups. And then we have some shelves from Ikea. I think something to take into consideration is how we uh, have gotten the same type of shelves. So we have the Fajabolo, I think it's something like that are called, who knows Ikea names. And then we got like the smaller version. Uh, but these uh, are used to create leading lines. So like if Kyle's like straight on me right now, you could see how like this is kind of leading itself and pointing to me. But when you're shooting at an angle, having leading lines is just a cool way to create attention focused on your subjects. And then as far as we decorated, obviously, you know, we got some books, we got some cameras, uh, you know, we got some, some plaques, you know what I'm saying? And then we got a, a very cheap way of making your you know, logo big. We just got our logo printed and then create, you know, stacking these for some layers and some dimension. Um, but I think, I think more than anything, what's the takeaway here, Omar? 
uh, have have an inclusive look. You know, nothing is left field here. You know, the light, the plants give it life, but the books are like, okay, they read books. We got some tech because we're a tech channel, uh, but you don't, you know, you don't have to go crazy on this. I think a lot of people go too hard on their shelving. Uh, less is more when it comes to shelf design, and I am still growing in this arena. So that covers this year's Think Media podcast setup. I hope you got value in this video, and if you did, hit that like button, and let me know down in the comments below any questions you may have or what you think of our setup here. And if you wanna try Riverside today for free, be sure to check out the link down in the description below. Uh, I'm super excited to be able to produce, alongside with Kyle and the team, an incredible podcast that's getting reach as we help people on YouTube. And with that being said, if you're looking to get serious on YouTube this year, subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can also check out another video from us here at Think Media that'll go a little bit deeper in regards to starting a podcast this year. Thanks so much for locking in. Hope to see you in a future video. Peace.